वेलकम टू ऑस्टियोलॉजी क्लासेस टूडे टॉपिक इज ऑस्टियोलॉजी ऑफ लंबार वर्टिब्रे सो लंबार वर्टिब्रे कंसिस ऑफ सेम एलिमेंट एज थोरासिक वर्टिब्रे बट आर मोर मैसेव एज दे आर वेट बेरिंग वर्टिब्रे सो देर आर फाइव लंबार वर्टिब्रे आउट ऑफ विच द फर्स्ट फोर दट इज एल वन टू एल फोर आर टिपिकल एंड एल फाइव इज ए टिपिकल सो हियर इज image of showing the lumbar vertebra along with the sacrum so this is l1 l2 l3 4 and l5 and fifth lumbar vertebra is atypical and upper four are typical typical lumbar vertebra the features of lumbar vertebrae they have massive reniform uh, kidney shaped bodies so here we can see the body which is almost kidney shaped and absence of foramina transverse area in the transverse process cervical vertebra are mainly identified by foramen transverse area and these foramen transverse area are absent in lumbar vertebra foramen transverse area are the foramens are the openings which are present in the transverse process absence of costal facets on the body the next feature how to differentiate from the thoracic vertebra is by the absence of costal facets thoracic vertebra are mainly identified by the presence of costal facets on the body and these costal facets are absent in lumbar vertebra and next feature is the presence of accessory and mammillary processes so accessory process and mammillary process are present in the lumbar vertebra and the spinous process is quite thick and it is quadrilateral so we see a thick quadrilateral spinous process so these are the important features that's how we differentiate the lumbar vertebra from thoracic vertebra and cervical vertebra so generally the cervical vertebra will have foramen transverse area which is absent in lumbar vertebra and the thoracic vertebrae are identified by the facets over the body which are the costal facets to articulate with the heads of the rib so the facets are the important features in thoracic vertebra and where they are absent in lumbar vertebrae so let's see the features of uh, body of lumbar vertebra the size of the body progressively increases from first to fifth lumbar vertebra so we can see the size increases from first to fifth lumbar vertebra and the body is massive and reniform that is kidney shaped and its transverse diameter is more than the anterior posterior diameter so the transverse diameter is more when compared with the anterior posterior diameter coming to vertebral foramen it is triangular in shape so that vertebral canal or vertebral foramen here it is triangular in shape and it is larger in the thoracic vertebra but smaller than in the cervical vertebra so if you see the size of the vertebral foramen or vertebral canal it is larger than in the thoracic vertebra but it is smaller when compared to the cervical vertebrae next regarding the vertebral arch vertebral arch is made of pedicles laminae spine and superior and inferior articulating processes
so we can see the superior articulating processes as we are seeing it from the superior view similarly there are two inferior articulating processes which bears uh, facets called as superior and inferior articulating facets pedicles pedicles are the short and strong processes which connects the whole vertebral arch to the body and these pedicles they project backwards from the upper parts of the body as a result the inferior vertebral notches are more deeper than the superior ones so this is the superior vertebral notch and we can see the inferior vertebral notch is quite deeper so here inferior vertebral notch and this one is the superior vertebral notch laminae the laminae are short thick and broad plates and they are directed posteromedially and the overlapping between the laminae is the adjoining vertebrae is minimal so the uh, laminae doesn't much overlap in the lumbar region and here are the laminae which are uh, thick and broad plates and they converge to form the spine the spine is quadrilateral in shape and it projects backwards next regarding the transverse process the transverse process is thin and tapering and they are homologous to the ribs in the thoracic region so we can appreciate the accessory process in lateral view of the vertebra so this is the transverse process on postero inferior aspect of the transverse process the projection is called as accessory process or accessory mammillary process so this accessory process which represents the true transverse process of the vertebra the superior articulating process lay farther apart than the inferior articulating processes so the distance between the two superior articulating process is quite more than the distance between the two inferior articulating process in a lumbar vertebra and the posterior border of the superior articulating process is marked by a rough elevation which is called as mammillary process so this rough elevation mammillary process next regarding the inferior articular process the inferior articular processes lie nearer to each other uh, other than the superior articular process but uh, they uh, they bear the convex articular facets which face forward and laterally so you can see the facets inferior articulating facets which are projecting laterally facing laterally let us talk about the features of atypical fifth lumbar vertebra l5 the fifth lumbar vertebra presents the distinguishing features which are like the transverse process are thick and shorter so we can see thick and shorter transverse process and uh, these are like almost uh, pyramidal in shape and their base is attached to the whole thickness of the pedicle and here is the pedicle and we can see the whole base of the transverse process is in attachment to the pedicle and the spine is small short and least substantial and rounded in tip the body is largest of all the lumbar vertebra the vertical height of the anterior surface of the body is more than that of the posterior surface and this difference is responsible for a prominent lumbosacral angle that is around 120 degrees so the angle between the lumbar and the longer axis of the lumbar vertebra and the long axis of the sacral vertebra makes around 120 degrees which is called as lumbosacral angle the superior articulating facets look more backwards than medially so the superior articulating facets are towards posterior side 
and inferior articulating facets look more forward than the laterally as compared to the typical lumbar vertebra. The distance between the inferior articulating process is equal or more than the superior articulating process. So normally in a typical lumbar vertebra, we have seen the distance between the two superior articulating process is more when compared with the distance between the two inferior articulating process. But in a atypical L5 lumbar vertebra, the distance between the inferior articulating process is equal or more than the superior articulating process. So these are the important features which differentiates L5 as atypical lumbar vertebra. Let's see some clinical aspects associated with lumbar vertebra. First one is the sacralization of fifth lumbar vertebra. So here we can see the L5 is joining with the sacrum. So the, it is the fusion of fifth lumbar vertebra with the sacrum. So the fusion may be complete or incomplete. So the transverse process of L5 may articulate with the alloy of the sacrum or the ileum and compress the L5 spinal nerves. So we know from here the L5 spinal nerves should exit out. So, because of the sacralization, the, uh, because of the overgrowth of the bone, the L5 nerve may get compressed in the intervertebral foramen. So, this condition occurs about in 5% of individuals. Pondylolysis. In this condition, there is a separation of both L5 lumbar vertebra from the vertebral arch bearing inferior articular surface on one side only. So, inferior articular process of L5 vertebra normally interlock with the articular process of sacrum. So, this condition is called as spondylolysis. Spondylolysis, it is the forward slipping of fifth lumbar vertebra over sacrum. Sometimes the inferior articular processes, a laminae and the spine of L5 vertebra are separated from the rest of the vertebra. And this slip forward on the o sloping uh, superior surface of the sacrum. So, this condition may clinically present a back pain that is a backache and pain radiating along the course of sciatic nerve which is termed as sciatica. So, this completes the osteology of lumbar vertebra. Thank you.